Everyone, welcome. It is 8 p.m. It is also Wednesday, which means we're doing open mic again. So this has been going on. This is actually what week is this? Is I mean, it's the top four, but this is the third week, fourth week. This is the fourth week. Fourth week. Fourth week of doing this. <laughs> so we've had musicians in the beginning. Each week we've been letting one musician go as we've gone through this. And tonight we're going to do the same in the next hour here. So you're going to see from four different Chicago musicians. And then we're going to hear some judge feedback. And we're going to do this whole little thing tonight as we do go competition wise. <laughs> All right. So what this is, this is a six week online music competition to raise money for breast cancer research and awareness. This is because my parents were tired in December. They, they moved into a new home in February to to plot retirement. And then in May is when we found out that my mother uh, was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. And Wednesday is her chemo day. And so I wanted to, I wanted to give her something to, to look forward to, something to have that she could watch and be a part of. So my mother has been watching every week throughout all of this. She also gives us the order for who's performing that night. We make her randomly give us numbers between one and four, and then we plot it based on registration order. So. Uh, Mom, I know you're watching. Love you. Thank you. This is all for you. And Ashley works for the American Cancer Society, my wonderful girlfriend doing amazing things in the world, which whenever she talks about like what ACS does, it always kind of gets me because it's never, it's never like, oh, we're doing this. It's no, we want, we want a world without cancer. Yeah. I think one of the most interesting things is it's one of the only nonprofits that um, doesn't only raise money for research, but we have patient programs as well. So like we have a tender loving care program that provides wigs and mastectomy bras and, you know, parents related products. And then we have a road to recovery program that drives patients to and from chemo. So it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of good work going on there. It's just so much that I didn't, I didn't realize the breadth of all of it. So, uh, Ashley helping out, getting all of this out there as well. And then my family is also watching throughout this. So family, hello, wonderful, good to see you. We are also having this as part of a GoFundMe. So if you do see that button on the site that says donate, that's gonna take you over there. And so far to date, we have finally hit over $1,000 as part of the competition. That's it, we're cheering, we're cheering. Uh, we thought 20,000 would be cool. <laughs> I don't, I mean, we, we gotta, if we, we don't ask for it, we're never going to get it. So we, dream big. <laughs> yeah, we tried to dream real big, but part of what I love that we're doing with this is we're actually packaging everything up about how to run an open mic. And so we're hoping other communities are going to start running their own open mics with their own musicians, their own comedians, getting something together to really celebrate the people in our own communities. So if you would like to get that going for yourself, you can reach out to Ashley, talk to her about how we've done this and see what kind of help. ACS might be able to do because they've been awesome through all of this. Just thank you to everyone at ACS who's been helping to promote this. Everyone who has even donated to this, that it's just, I didn't, I wasn't in the ACS family before. And now, now I feel like- Now I'm, you're dating I'm it. like hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Schedule. So top four perform right now, not right now, but in a little bit, but tonight, Next week, top three, and that's sponsored by my good friend Bruce from Chicago Beer Experience. We'll talk more about that. And then I have our championship, which we're going formal on this, right? We're going formal championship. We're going to, like, dress up. Like, Magic Penthouse is sponsored. They're a fancy thing. Like, gala so, attire? Yes, <laughs> gala attire. So, but last week, last week, we had to say bye to Dimitri. So for those of you that have met through this, you guys are incredible. And I look forward to us being allowed to actually congregate because that's the kind of people we are. <laughs> in for more snarkiness tonight as we roll through our top four so coming out this evening we're gonna have jay lynn performing first after her we're gonna hear from quentin we have nicholas runkle in third and closing out the evening is going to be catalina we also have a couple guest judges 
as you just heard from the very snarky karaoke monster herself, Barbie. Barbie, welcome, welcome back. Not snarky. I'm sassy. Sassy, sassy. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Barbie, why, why should anyone care about your opinion on this, Kimmy? <laughs> they shouldn't. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> How do we trust you? How do we know you've got some musical prowess here as a karaoke monster? Um, so my voice sounds like this because, and you're going to judge me here, I don't care. I had 20, over 21 days on my 21st birthday month, I had nine 21st birthday parties because I knew so many people and none of them really knew each other. And I did karaoke about four times in three weeks well turning 21 and that's the reason my voice sounds the way it does so clearly i've got a lot of miles on me that what's sounds your gross. song but what what's your go-to karaoke song oh god um depends on the crowd honestly um my my standards are son of a preacher man dream a little dream of me i do a really mean um against the wind by bob seeger and i mean I can do and Power of Love by Huey Lewis. I'm excellent at. Not to toot my own horn, but toot, talking toot. <laughs> Tooted. Also tonight, Deliva. Deliva, really good friend of mine. We played multiple shows together. Deliva, if you want to you know, come on out here and say hello. <laughs> Look at my prayer hands. It looks so funny. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm constant. I'm in constant prayer and meditation. Uh, as a result, I'm not only a musician, I'm a Zen Buddhist master. So watch. If you happen to wow me, I'll bestow enlightenment upon you. Uh, do you, live, who, are you? Things for, who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Yeah. What do you do? Now you're asking the deep questions, Joe. Um, you, my you. real name is Vidal Ekachuku. Vidal is an anagram of the liver or vice versa. Um, I love music in general. I particularly love hip hop music. And I've been playing music since I was in fourth grade, which I started playing trombone and then started making music in my 20s and started performing it more seriously a few years ago. I met Joe out on the open mic scene, met Quentin there as well. Quentin actually plays guitar for me when I perform live. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna recuse myself of judging his performance yet, but I'm looking forward to hear everybody play. Chicago, <laughs> Western suburb native, but thank you. I appreciate you, Joe. I've been watching you uh, and the initiatives that you've been starting these last few years, and this one's definitely one of the coolest. Nice. <laughs> thank you, and I couldn't have it without you. I, we needed to fit you in somewhere, so thank you for being a judge. I know you couldn't commit to every week, but I'll take you as a judge for one week. Thanks, All right, Joe. I got you. Thank you. So as we go through the evening, you will be able to vote. It's going to be $3 for voting. You can vote at any time. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, you're going to need to go over to openmic.community. And there's me, the voting button on there. So stick around, vote for your favorite artist at the end. And tonight we're doing this cool little Groupon style thing where if you vote, you actually get a 10% off coupon for Chicago Pizza Tours. And Jonathan Porter, really good friend of mine from Chicago Pizza Tours, was awesome enough to come in and actually donate this. He's also donating two tickets to the grand prize pool. And Jonathan, I just wanna, I wanna bring you on. I just wanna say thank you for helping out with this. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you thought of me. So I'm glad we can be part of this. Well, I feel like we are, we're kind of teasing everyone now right now, just these giant tickets of pizza. But can you, can you tell everyone what a pizza tour actually is? Because I'm just picturing a lazy Susan that we just put a pizza on and we just got to spin it like pizza roulette. But it's not. That would that. be great. <laughs> I, yeah, I, <laughs> I get that question a lot, actually. Um, and, and it is just what it sounds. Um, we designed tours of Chicago based around its most significant food, which is pizza. Um, it's not all just deep dish in Chicago, plenty of tavern style thin crust as well. So the locals know that. Um, but it's a, about a three, three and a half hour tour. We go visit four different restaurants. 
We learn the history, we learn the types of ingredients, the ovens, the cooking methods, what makes these pizzas so significant, um, all while you see Chicago. And it's just a fun way to spend an afternoon. Um, and I've been doing it for 10 years now, so can't believe it. That's amazing. Just that we, we have pizzas. I've seen some of the stuff you do with like pizza schools and pizza certifications. Like this is just a Oh, there's world. a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can really get nuts with it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> last year I decided to get my Pizzioli uh, certification, which uh, was like, it's basically like going to pizza camp for, for a week. And uh, um, it really didn't have anything to do with, with the tours, but it just helped my, my understanding of pizza even a little bit more. And um, you know, that's part of our brand. We want to be the best. We want to know what we're talking about. And we want to be able to explain why these, you know, pizzas taste the way they do and, and why this one's different from that one. There's no, there's no best, right? There's only favorites. So. <laughs> well, we're going to bring you back at the end and I'm going to force you into giving me a list of 10 pizzerias that we should be looking at. So. 10? Okay. There. Right. 10, please get started on your list. Thank you. All right. All right. John, thank you for being here. So tell us on Instagram. Uh, we'd love to see who you're voting for, maybe even what your favorite pizza place is. You can tag us at openmic.community. And now let's get into it. Let's get into our first artist of the evening, Jay Lynn. Jay Lynn, please come on over here. And the first thing I want to know from you is, do you, do you have a favorite pizza place in Chicago? Um, kind of. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm more of a hot dog girl than a pizza girl. Um, but if I had to pick, it'd probably be like Dino's East. Dino's East. All right. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so actually, what was this? We asked, what did we ask Jaylen to give us here? Um, so I asked each performer to give me a picture of something that makes them proud. So it could be a person, a thing, something they created. It could be anything. So Jaylen, this is what you sent. So who are these? Who There's, are so, these many kids? There's, so, There's many so many emojis. There's so many emojis. Why are you thinking about emojis? Wires. I had to cover their faces. <laughs> um, those are some of my students from a few years ago. And okay, that, so that particular there. group used to actually come in during their like recess and lunchtime to like practice extra and just hang out with me. And, what do you mean uh, students? What are you, what are you teaching? Uh, I'm a music teacher. What kind of music? Like recorder? Yes, and other things. <laughs> Most of these kids um, were in the after-school rock band that I had. Okay, nice. so you're, you're not only just playing, performing, you're, you're paying this forward as well and even teaching kids about music. So you're like the Jack Black in School of Rock. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's, pretty good. that's a pretty good comparison. Uh, so tonight, what are you playing? Um, it's a, an original, it's called Crazy. Crazy. Sounds very romantic. Is this a romantic song? <laughs> yeah. <No, it's> not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay Lynn, the stage is yours. Thank you for being here.
thoughts I'm trying to disguise You Got me under your spell And I'm Am I already found You make me That just that just feels like Ravenswood pop punk. That's just <laughs> I just I get it in there. Barbie, Barbie, we're gonna start with you. Give Jalen some feedback here. Okay, foremost, the fact obviously I didn't know that you taught kids with music. Thank you. Okay, because the amount of programs that have been cut, and we're not gonna go too deep into it because I will get very loud and very mean, and <laughs> we're not gonna do it. But the amount of kids who don't have an opportunity um, to just have a chance at learning, learning an instrument or learning um, you know, pentameter and what it can do for you personally and what it can do for you rhythmically, like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, it makes me so happy. Um, okay, so your song, like I love a good like love and hate track, you know, like something like because who hasn't been there, number one, or might still be there. <laughs> Everybody, think about it. <laughs> um, but it's just it speaks volumes to. Uh, I mean, it's just such a widely consuming thing that everybody's been there for so I think it kind of you know makes you just makes you double take <laughs> and like I said I just love a good love hate love it <laughs> deliver deliver how you're side I think it's um very apropos and suspiciously uh interesting that you sang your hook when you make me crazy when we were just talking about Britney Spears and she has a song whose hook goes, you drive me crazy. So well done. Well done. Uh, I'm adjusting to the moment. I'm assuming you changed the hook on the fly, but no, I can, uh, <laughs> one of the things I like the most about music is when it's com trying to communicate something concisely and effectively. Uh, I think coming from the world of hip hop, there's a lot of rappers that like, you just could take their face and put it on someone else's and they're saying the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the ones that really cut through other people who are like, oh, I actually understood that that person was trying to say something to us. And I think it's pretty clear what you're trying to say in your music. And I, I think it also reflects in how you sing it. So well done. Thank you. So this is where I love, like, Deliv, I know you and I have had multiple talks about local music and pushing for local. But just, I feel like there's so many stories to be told. Right. And we only get the ones that end up filtering up through all the masses for everyone to hear. Yeah. And this is, I know you want to be as big as, what is it? I know as pop, you're playing the era of black pop. You're going to be as big as. Oh, uh, Biggie, Jay-Z and Pac. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So your, your lines, not mine. Uh, <laughs> But with that, just the idea that I, I think we dream about being so big and it just, we don't need to be as big. Like be big in Chicago, be big in your community and like have those songs that make sense that I'm hoping more people watching this start following the artists and then let's go bring some local music back at the end of all this. So, all right. 
Jay Lynn, good job, thank Jay you. Lynn. Thank you. Well you model citizen teaching music and performing. <laughs> Just, oh, I'm Jay Lynn. I'm going to do both. <laughs> Quentin. Quentin, let's have you come on out here. Hello. Welcome back, hey. Hugh. Thank you for having me. Hugh, so we are, what, we started this back in March or April. We started doing open mics. Hmm. Now we're, we're approaching on August, and this is it. You're, you're the last of the original crew that we started this with. Yeah. That we brought in some new names to this open mic, people that we've now had the chance to meet. But are you, are you going to stay in this queue? Do you think you're still competing? You going you to take this to the end? Um, I not sound like too cocky or anything, um, but I, I, I think I have a, a pretty good chance <laughs> making, it, making it to the end. I feel like we knew that a while ago. Uh, so you also, before COVID hit, you were hosting an open mic. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, so it was at uh, Northside Bar and Grill. Um, I started going there, I believe it was end of 2017, I want to say, because um, a friend of mine had told me about it, and I met a ton of amazing and talented people um, the time I was there, and uh, I think it was, I want to say, like a year and a half later, um, I was asked to uh, step up and become the new host for the open mic, which uh, I was flabbergasted that I was even uh, <laughs> offered with that. Um, but I I said yes, and I'm really glad I said yes um, because it allowed me to make so many more uh, meaningful connections with uh, the artists in Chicago. I've met so many talented people. It's crazy. Um, and yeah, it was, it's sucks that we can't, uh, keep doing it right now. Um, and still up in the air on whether it's going to come back anytime soon. Um, but while it was happening, it was awesome. We'll do like outdoor acoustic concert. We'll just plan something, right? We can just go find a park over here. That's what we're And we're doing. doing it right now. We're just finding a different way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, tell about Pizza Place, Quentin. You got a favorite pizza place? Um, I think one that's kind of like one of my go-tos is uh, Vito and Angelo um, over by, it's in Full, uh, Logan Square near me. It's on Fullerton and uh, Central Park. Um, they're one of my faves. Um, they just, they season their pizza so good. Um, and yeah, it's just, I love it. All right. And then we also asked you for a picture of something that you're proud of. Yes. And in this, uh, which by the way, so the shirt you're wearing here, this Metallica shirt is also, uh, <laughs> I changed to match you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is this? What is this from? So this is from the end of my high school years. Um, and the, the reason I, I chose this picture was because this was the first time that I had played it in like actual music venue with a band in front of people that I didn't know. Um, so this was a, a big step for me in uh, my, my journey through music. Um, and uh, if you look closely, you'll see my brother on, on the kit in back. Um, and these other two guys next to me were uh, some guys that I went to school with in, uh, in middle school. So we stayed in touch and decided to put some music together in high school. This was like my first like actual real band. That's awesome. And this also means that at this point your brother would have been how old in this photo? Um, okay, I think I I'm, I think it was 18 at the time, so Devin was around 13. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then what are you playing in IQ? Um, I'm playing Breathe by Breaking, Breaking Benjamin for all of my, uh, my emo kids. <laughs> all right. Stage is yours, Q. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Oh, 
Right, and so why, why Breaking Benjamin? Why did you, why did you pick that song? Um, their composition for their songs has always uh, interested me. Um, like I was explaining earlier before we went live, um, one of the things that they, that I, that they do that I really love is uh, when they start the song off and with the verses, it's all in minor keys. It all sounds super sad. And then they get to the hook and they change the whole mood of the song and go major keys. So that that one specifically goes from um, E minor sharp in the verses, and then when it goes into the hook, they go into G major sharp. Um, so yeah, I, when I when I first heard them, I never uh, heard anybody else doing that. Um, so that's that's one of the things that uh, gravitated me towards them. Awesome, deliver. Mm -hmm. Deliver, we're going to start with you here. Your feedback for your man, Quentin. Quentin, a couple other notable songs, because I, I love when artists do that too. I've heard it in Jay-Z and uh, Justin Timberlake did that in uh, Holy Grail, and Kanye did that for Dark Fantasy at the beginning of it. But yeah, it's a very good compositional pattern. Q, <laughs> uh, it's hard for me to compliment you too much because Every time I see and hear you play, I'm like, dang it, just when I thought I was getting better, I need to, you know, <laughs> completely kill that impression. This kid is something else. And your level of talent uh, is extremely aspirational. 
every time you play, I, I there are very rarely here people who play as calmly and comfortably and proficiently as you do. And it's just a testament to how much you've really invested in the craft, you know, and that's something that was very obvious about you and your brother that you guys care about the craft perhaps above all else. So well done. I think most of the feedback is just obviously how well you did and um, keep it up, man. I keep being inspired. Also, I love when Leslie is just like is lifeless for most of it and then starts twitching a little bit or starts bopping around. So that's a nice little stage. I'll fun at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well done, Q. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All right. First thing, off topic, go figure, because I don't love doing that. Your Ride the Lightning shirt and that picture that you had, unequivocally their best album, period. I don't care what anybody says about it, and this is like a totally unsubstantiated opinion, but everyone else can eat it. It's Lightning, Kill Em All, Puppets, Justice, period. That's how it is. For me, at least. On that, but we'll save that. Yeah, for I know, time. right? Um, so, um, when you started recognizing uh, those key patterns, and everybody starts like nodding along, like, "Yeah," I'm like, "Uh huh, sure, okay." <laughs> so, in a um, less proficient way of describing what you said you liked so much about them and what deliver, deliver. I just put an R on the end of it. Deliver. My bad. Um. um what I call that is building a narrative through tempo. And in my opinion, I, I'm sure you guys can agree, it does. It's, it's almost creating a character outside of the song and the voice together. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's its own entity um, and it creates its own, its own narrative. And I, I appreciate it as well. Even though I don't know what keys are what, I can still like it. Um, and oh, that's what I was gonna say. It's actually extremely complimentary to your vocal stylings, which you know I really like your the way that you sing. Um, it was I was surprised though because last week when you were hitting all of those high notes, I was surprised that I saw you stumble just a little bit on some of those on some of those peaks. It still sounded good, but I was surprised because last week you were just like climbing K two with that crap, <laughs> and I expected you to just like rip this up also is breaking is this considered emo uh for i think a lot of people i believe okay. yeah i mean there's there's not every emo band is like gonna sound exactly the same um it did I, in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned those bands that kind of uh one of the bands that like started that movement Okay. Yeah, no, and like I said, I'm not trying to be um, disingenuous by saying that. I, I Educate me, you know what I mean? I just didn't, um, I obviously fell out of my uh, emo range around the aforementioned 2002, and everything sounded very similar. <laughs> All right, Barbie, thank you. I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you again for being here. Thank you. Appreciate you playing. Thank you, guys. Uh, so you can go through. Vote for Quentin. If you're watching on Facebook Live, the link is down in the comments. If you're on openmic.community, you'll see the link to vote there. You can go through and vote for Quentin. And then let's bring up our next performer, Mr. Nicholas Runkel. You're here to join us. You didn't How's leave. How's it going? Going all right. How about yourself? I'm doing well. All right. How's it feeling as you're advancing? Are we, are we looking forward to Wednesdays now because of this? I mean, I'll be honest, you know, I, I, I'm unemployed right now, so this is my Friday sort of celebration. <laughs> I look forward every week to, to this Wednesday a lot. Um, you can ask my friends. I bug them about it starting on, well, Thursday after the show and then Sunday, <laughs> Wednesday. Um, they'll, they'll vouch for me. I, I, I'm on them about how excited I am about this, yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm super excited to have you. I think it was from LinkedIn even that we... Yeah we found out about this and got connected to begin with. So, all right. And then Nick tonight, uh, let's start with favorite pizza. What do you have? Do you have a favorite? Wow. I, I love pizza so much. It would be the only food I would ever eat. So this was a really difficult decision for me to make. And then I started saying like, well, does it count as a Chicago place if it's not Chicago pizza? 
And I decided I'm going with an Evanston favorite here, Union Squared, with their Detroit style pizza. I love Detroit. Interesting. Interesting. It's really good. It, uh, right. it's, it's like Jets uh, four four corner or eight corner or whatever. It's, it's or old school Little Caesars. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. All right. There's a there's a really great food truck in Chicago called Five Squared Food Truck that they've become one of my new personal favorites, and they do Detroit style as well. Yeah, they're good. And they're mixing up the slices with buffalo chicken and oh, all wow. kinds of stuff. They're getting me. We'll have to go. We're going to go, Nicholas Grunkle. All right. Yes. And then we asked you to submit a picture of something that you were very proud of. And this is what we got. Nicholas, what is, yeah. what is this? Who is this? That is my wife, Christine, uh, Chris Bankers, Runkle. Uh, she's known by all those names. Christine, Chris, Bankers, Runkle, you name it. But she's Christine Runkle, and she's my hero. Why? Why? Why is she your hero? Oh, my gosh. I mean... She's only in, in one minute. In one minute. <laughs> uh, she's the only one who consistently can put up with me, so that's already a good start. Uh, she's a survivor for cancer. That's a number two, and number three. I mean, look at her. She just looks so happy. <laughs> she does. I feel like I want to be friends with her just from that photo. <laughs> All right, then Nick, what are you playing tonight? Uh, Stations of the Cross or Get Off the Stage, You Lousy Drunk. It has two titles. This is a very famous cover. This is an original. Which one? This is an original that may someday be a very famous cover. I. <laughs> uh, no, this is an original. Um, it's my open mic opus. It's about how sometimes people are there listening but not paying attention and everything you're doing is for them anyway. This is not a good example because this is not a traditional open mic. But imagine a crowded bar where people are talking over you and then this song comes on. All right. Don, we're in the scene, Nick. Take it away. The stage is yours. You bet. I want to thank everybody, uh, especially Joe, Jay Lynn, Quentin, and Kat, Catalina. Good luck to everybody. Stations of the Cross. Say I'm alive for you. you. Want me to act like you care? Think that if you listen now, some way I could show you how. All I could tell you is that I care. You get a piece of my soul for believing in rock and roll. It's not the words I say. So don't let them get in the way It's the meaning I have for them The fact that I adore him If Dylan ain't that bad Then at least this guy is free You want me to die for you But I say I'm alive for you You want me to act like you care Think that if you listen now Some way I could show you how all I can tell you is that I care If I had my greatest guess Without worry of regret I guess I'd say there's something I had found There is no way to know it If ever I could show it The cards will always fall the way they're down you want me to die for you, but I say I'm alive for you. You want me to act like you care. Think that if you listen now, there's some way I could show you how. All I could tell you is that I care. Now, where do you want me to go? Should I reach to touch your soul? Should I end for thunderous applause? Would you clap along now just because? Do you know that this is the start with the beating of my heart? Would you follow impossible dreams even if you know what that means? You want me to die for you? But well, I say I'm alive for you. You 
woman to act like you care Thinking if you listen now There's some way I could show you how All I could tell you is that I care Thank you. Thanks. I can see it. I've been there. I've done the open mic with everyone in the room and not a lot of people paying attention. Deliva, you've done this as well. We're going to start with you. Um, again, I think it's great with, when you write about stuff that is applicable to your life. And having gone to many open mics for a while, I have, I have a, a feeling that, because um, some artists respond to that response or reaction differently. Some people get frustrated. Some people are just like, they're going through the motions too, so it doesn't really matter to them. The way I think about it is that it's your job as an artist to make people pay attention to you. So when Joe is up there doing creative Kanye West cover renditions or he's trying to get crowd involvement or people use different kinds of techniques or if you're up there and you're playing this song and you connect with them either visually or however else, I think it really increases that intimacy. But um, well done. Also, I can appreciate the key in which you're playing because I and I think your voice and my voice are sort of similar. You're kind of in that baritone, mid baritone area, I think. And that's where I tend to string, sing most strongly as well. So good job for picking something that's appropriate to your voice and your strengths, I think. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. Hi, Nick. OK. Hi, Bob. Hi. Did you just call me Barb? Oh, my God, what a nightmare. Never mind. We'll do, we'll talk about that <laughs> later. Um, so I told you Michael McDonald our first week together, and I felt more of that this time. And literally, while I was writing my notes, I'm like, who the hell would treat McDonald like this? Like, I'll destroy them. You know? <laughs> so you created a storyscape in my head. I appreciate it. Um, but no, uh, I guess this is still kind of personal. All three boyfriends I've ever had have been musicians, so I have been to these shows. And it's <laughs> actually, you know, it's really, I mean, it is, it's difficult because you are, you're putting yourself out there and yeah, sometimes it might not always be as amazing as you want it to be, but it's like, well, somebody just freaking turn and look at me. Like, I'm doing this, you couldn't do this, you piece of crap <laughs> at least that's maybe the girlfriend perspective is like <laughs> i will throw a bottle at you if you're not going to pay attention to my boyfriend right now um but no i actually i liked it it was a little more uppity considering how um like kind of depressing it was and if dylan ain't bad at least this guy is free is arguably hello cat is arguably one of the funniest things i have heard in a very long time um because I'm not actually laughing, internally I'm dying. So <laughs> thank you for that. You know I love you, dude. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> Nick, that was awesome. I appreciate it being your open mic opus as well. I think everyone oh, yeah. appreciates a good opus. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you. Yeah. I uh, you can vote for Nick. Make sure you're if you go to openmic.community, there's the vote button there, or if you're on Facebook Live, it's right down below. Go vote for Nick. Get those votes in. Uh, last week, it did come down to just one vote between who stayed and who left. So every vote matters. Every, it, came <laughs> out, it came out of two votes between who stayed and who left. So it's just it's little things that matter. Here we go. Catalina. Catalina, we've got you to close out the night with us here. Hello. It's wonderful to see you again. Thank you for being here. How have you been since yeah. last week? I've been good. Um, yeah, like similar to Nick, I've just been looking forward to it and it's just fun. It's just a fun thing to do in the middle of the week and gives me something to look forward to. All right. How about pizza wise? So we're talking about pizza night with Jonathan sponsoring this. Do you have a favorite? Yes. So there's this place, um, I live in Lakeview. There's this place on, called Rinaldi's that's on Broadway and Diversity. And it's so good. It's just thin crust pizza, like huge slices, and you just like walk past, and you're just you can just like smell the pizza, and it smells so good that like every time I walk past, I just want to get a slice. <laughs> so there's a there's a place in Wicker Park called Metro Pizza that does like little slices to go, and I feel like that's an after 11 p.m. pizza. Yeah. Is Rinaldi's a before 11 p.m. pizza, or is it that late night slice that you get? It could be both. Like I've had it, I've only had it for dinner. So like before 11 and I think it's great. Yeah. But it, it could be, it could be after too. <laughs> All right. We're on it. We're on it. We're going to track it down. 
And then we asked you as well, uh, Ashley, was what, something they're proud of? Something you're proud of, something yes. Something proud of? And Catalina, we got this. What is yeah. this picture? This is a picture of my mom and I. Um, I'm definitely really proud of her. She had a stroke six months ago and has been doing such a good job of recovering and getting better. And I'm just really proud of her and her dedication and just always having a positive attitude about it. Does your mom live in the area? She lives in Indy, so I'm actually at home right now. Um, but no, she's a, she's a little far away from Chicago. It's like three hours, so it's not, not too bad. Close enough. I can go home like I am now and see her. And then how old is this picture? Where is this one from? This is from actually earlier this summer. Um, we went to a drive-in movie. That was really fun. Um, and we saw yeah. RV. <laughs> But this is taken there. And Where I really did you find a drive-in movie? Well, in Indiana, there's a lot of drive-in movies because <laughs> there's a lot of farmland. But we <laughs> went to one, yeah, we went to one like outside of Indianapolis. So in Chicago, I don't know how you would get into one. I feel like they're so crowded. Like, I, and I don't have a car, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> All right, then what are you playing tonight? Um, I'm playing a song. Uh, called Angel from Montgomery by John Prine. Okay. Sage is yours, Catalina. Thank you for being here. All right. So how many how many country songs do you have in your arsenal? 
like three, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so and, that, and like the other two are like Casey Musgraves and Marin Morris. So more like pop country. All right, so why this song? Why why this country song? Um, I just think it's really pretty and like, I just thought it was really beautiful how a lot of like the lyrics are very like simple things, but they just sound like really, really like beautiful parts of life and just made made me like think about it and made me want to learn the song. Awesome. All right, Barbie. Barbie, some feedback from Catalina, please. Funny, just because you just said that. Okay, first of all, the pop country thing, I wrote that down. You kind of have, in my opinion, with your vocal styling, um, you kind of have that dream scenario that I think a lot of people try to achieve when they're doing pop country because they want to sway a little bit more towards the pop aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And with the way you sing, you don't naturally go into that twang. You know what I mean? You made it yeah. appropriate towards the way that you sing songs. Um, and what you just said about like 10 seconds ago or 20 seconds ago, because I talk a lot, um, about like the way that song makes you feel. I actually think the way you sing lends itself very well to why you feel that way about the song and the way that you made it into something that you wouldn't necessarily guess it's country. Um, also, for those of you that don't know, John Prine was from Maywood, Illinois, and he just passed away this year. And you don't have to really like country all that much to get into him. And I'd recommend everybody give it a listen. It's good. Thank you. <laughs> Deliver, how about you? Well done, Catalina. It's interesting that you mentioned Casey Musgraves because I thought you had, your voice actually reminded me a lot of her. You have very impressive vocal stylings and, or, and I guess more specifically character to your voice. I think something that some people who are singing or are singing at this level do is like, you can tell the ones who have been singing for a while because they're past singing the right notes uh, and you, they're putting their character a little bit and, and inflections into their voice. So well done with that. And yeah, it's a, it also felt like something that was very intimate to you. So good, good song selection. Thank you. I'm with them, Kevin. It's been a pleasure to have you on this and to watch you change up the songs and do this. That this is another really great performance. So thank you very much for being here. You can vote for Catalina. Make sure that you go over to the site at openmic.community or if you're on Facebook Live, it's down below. And this is, this is it. This is the end of the show. Yeah. This is the last chance to vote. Yes. Yeah. You have to go yeah. vote. Go vote right now. <laughs> you never asked us what our favorite pizza was, Joe. Oh, so. yeah. So. Barbie, your favorite pizza, Barbie. All right, so if you vote, you get 10% off at Chicago Pizza Tours. Oh, yeah. Then... We also get 10% off <laughs> the promo code. We've done Chicago Pizza Tours. Tours. It's fun. Isn't that what we went on, Joe? Yeah. That, that was a really good time. Yeah, it was. That was all of us. That was you, me, Ashley. I think Justin Green was there. Jonathan Porter. Friends, out. But Jonathan Porter, we're going to bring you back. So last time to vote. Barbie, we will start with you. What? What is your favorite pizza place? Oh, right on. Um, so I'm a label whore from Northbrook and Rogers Park. Um, so Lou Malnati's owns my soul, but Pequod's is easily the best deep dish pizza in the entire city. Sorry, Lou's. Don't hate me. <laughs> I still love you. Deliver, deliver, how are you? This is maybe the most blasphemous thing about me being a native Chicago and but I'm not really a pizza guy. I legitimately love Domino's pizza, but I could throw some names out there if you want me to. <laughs> no, if you, if you're going Domino's, you go Domino's. You just yeah, stand proud by it. can do it. Yeah. <laughs> you can form. Yeah. It always just, it's just like very good texture, very good like middle of the road quality. All, All the right. things you need in a pizza. <laughs> All right. And then one, oh, one yeah. more. Ashley, Ashley, I need you to come on. I need to know your favorite pizza. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that because like I used to eat Domino's all the time in college and I freaking loved it yeah. and I actually <laughs> miss it and me and Joe have an in or me and Joe have an inside joke we call it Dominios because <laughs> it, it is a fancy Italian restaurant and yeah. it's good everywhere and they're everywhere <laughs> and they're everywhere <laughs> um, but aside from Domino's I am a huge huge Pequod's fan and a huge Labriola fan Ooh. Is it good? Yeah. You got a nod. You got a nod from Jonathan Porter on this one. Yeah, because I think we went there on your tour. 
Pequods. <laughs> 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 We did not go to Pequods, and I we went to Labriola, though. And that's I was devastated that we didn't go to Pequods, but that's okay. <laughs> oh okay. man! All right, so John, welcome back. Was there a music competition tonight? Because I heard stuff about Rinaldi's, Union Square, <laughs> um, Dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we said we were bringing you back for your top ten, but your top ten isn't a best to worst. Your no, top 10 no. Was. I mean. Yeah, Chicago's got so, so many places, right? Like more than like 2,500 pizzerias, right? How are you going to pick out 10 uh, out of all that? But uh, 2,500? Yeah, there's 2,500 now. It used to be, I, so I used to tell him on the tour, there's a little more than 2,000. That was back in 2010. And there's, there's more now. There's a lot more, actually. So many have closed, but many more have opened. So there, there's a lot of pizza to be had in this, uh, this city, this area, I guess. All right, so I got your list of your top 10. So as we go through these, can you tell me a little bit about the difference between these? Because the first type of pizza you listed here was tavern style. What, is, what does tavern style mean? Tavern style, thin crust, meant as a, a, an appetizer or a snack as opposed to like that full blown meal. This is a bar pie. It, was, it really started out um, in the working class neighborhoods uh, where you had these, you know, for lack of a better, old style bars where they basically, you know, the working class people would get off their job. They'd start uh, just drinking old styles at, at the local pub. And you'd cook these thin crust pizzas that were more cracker-like as opposed to bread-like. Um, and they just cut them up into squares and uh, you would just kind of snack on them. It would keep the customers at the bar uh, a little bit longer, um, you know, because they wouldn't get hungry. So you might add a little bit more salt to it as well so they would drink a little bit more. But this was really a pizza that was engineered to be eaten inside of a tavern and it's kind of it, that is like the main pizza in Chicago everybody thinks of us as deep dish but tavern style dominates this market uh, it's the majority of all the pizza in the Chicago land area add a little more salt to it just add a little more salt yeah why not <laughs> all right deep the dish flavor enhancer. <laughs> <laughs> deep dish versus pan that Barbie was outraged that I didn't know the difference between these two well you think of pan, pan is more in still in that bread, uh, you know, kind of category where it, it's like those, um, it's like you took a traditional New York style slice and you beefed it up and you turned it into a, just a thicker. It's cooked in a deep dish. Pizza, so that's where it gets a little bit confusing. Um, but it's not the same type of dough that deep dish pizza is. Now, if we switch over to deep dish, I always think of deep dishes like, you know, think of like a pumpkin pie. As, as the deep dish pizza, right? Like that pie crust just lines the bottom, comes up on the sides, and it holds all these toppings in there. And the actual crust isn't super thick. It's cooked in a deep dish pan, but the crust is typically not too thick. Um, places, good examples of, of deep dish pizza would be Lou Malnati's, which probably has the thickest of the deep dish pizza uh, crust, Paisano's, Gino's East, um, Bartoli's like I put up there as well. Um, but these, the, the crust has a little bit more oil to it and it's a lot crispier than the more bread like pan style pizza. So like a Labriola's, a Pequod's, that's, it, it's still a little um, closer to like a focaccia or something. You got more bread uh, to that slice. Whereas you cut into a, a, a Paisano's or a Bartoli's, you basically, it's brittle. You, you cut into it and it kind of breaks and that, that's your, your bite right there. So um, they are, you know, different once you kind of, get to know it a little bit, but the key is more oil in deep dish pan. All right, so what do we got up here? Artisanal, should we go artisanal first here? Um, I, I've selected Coal Fire. Um, I've been a huge fan of Coal Fire since they first opened in 2007. It was very different pizza to come to Chicago. Chicago. Um, it's cooked in a colon. It's only a couple minutes to take it to cook it. Um, they really don't subscribe to any one style. <laughs> They took kind of aspects of true Italian pizza, East Coast style. They brought in Chicago bar style to, to their pizza. And it really doesn't have any sort of, you know, it, it's, it, it's an immigrant at this point, right? It, it's, it's just, it's, it's been mixed around and, and they're kind of doing their own thing. So I think Coal Fire really stands out on their own there. Um, and they're doing some amazing stuff. It's more bread-like, um, but it, it's just, it's absolutely delicious. Um, and Peace also, there's no better uh, pizzeria to go have a few beers at uh, than Peace Brewery and, and Pizzeria. Um, 
Bill Jacobs started Peace in, in 2001. Um, so, you know, they're, you know, 19 years old or so at this point. Um, but it, it is a New Haven style pizza, which is something I never had before until Peace came here. And uh, it, it's outstanding. It's very thin cut slices on a thin crust pizza. Um, and it's very chewy as well. So um, pretty cool toppings. They get crazy with the toppings. I know you were talking about some some crazy toppings for, for your food truck that you like and all that. Yeah. Um, they're not afraid to do it all over there at Peace. So um, huge fan of Peace as well. Nice. And then we also, we talked about uh, Detroit style. I heard, uh, you know, Union Square up in Evanston, um, you guys were talking about earlier. Um, I really like Polly G's Logan Square for Detroit style. And the best thing about that is, is that Derek Tong, the owner of Polly G's Logan Square, he, um, when he was making his Detroit styled squares in Logan Square there, um, he kind of misremembered some of the pizzas that he loved in Detroit. So he kind of messed it up a little bit, but what ended up happening was he created this new um, Detroit inspired type pizza. And he actually uh, took his pizza to, I believe he took it to Parma, Italy and, and, and went into this competition for, you know, become a world champion in this. And I think that he had one pizza was a world champion cup uh, um, winner and they still they serve that at the restaurant it's always on the menu um, so you got to order those ones in advance um, they use a different oven than the traditional wood-fired ovens that they have there um, but it's really cool so um, the Detroit style it's big it's thick it looks like it would be a heavy pizza but you can eat a bunch of it it's just very light and fluffy and the corners are where it's at you know it, it's they have these pans that take a tremendous amount of heat and they really caramelize the the white cheddar that kind of falls over the side there. So it's a really, really cool pizza. I'm so, so glad I knew that you were going to be here tonight and that we ordered Pequod's in advance of this so we could talk about pizza and then still enjoy. It was Ashley's idea. I'm so and jealous because yeah. I haven't had it in a while. <laughs> it's, it's been way too long for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonathan, that's awesome. Thank you very much again for donating two tickets to the prize pool and then also for the Thank coupon you. code tonight. We really appreciate awesome. you being here. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So we can go ahead and we are going to get to our top four performers and let's figure out who's moving on. So if all the performers want to turn their cameras back on, let's all come and hang out and say hello again. All right. I'll have you turn. You can turn your mics on as well. Uh, so another, another really good week and I love how we're mixing in originals and covers to so much of this that we do get the cover with the local flair. And then at the same time, we get these really great just originals from our community, from people who are in the same areas we are. I think it's, again, one of the things I love about this. So we're going to split this up into the top two and the bottom two. So in the top two tonight, Nicholas Runkle, you advance on to the second, and Quentin. You have made it into the top three. Jalen and Catalina, you've been doing so well. You've been here every week. I really, really enjoy having both of you here. One of you has to go. You did not receive enough votes tonight. Jalen, I'm sorry. You did not make the cut for the top three. So thank you. Barbie, we're going to start with you. Feedback for Jalen here. You guys did Linda Perry dirty, and I am not here for it. I will tell you that much. It has been such a delight listening to your music and getting to know you even briefly on a weekly basis. Um, I mean, that's how quarantine dating is, right? <laughs> like, like little tidbits at a time. Um, but no, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, getting to listen to you and get to know you. And when uh, the world isn't on fire. I will come back home to the city and I look forward to getting to meet you or see you sing and please yes. keep teaching the children. Well, be online. Teach the children online. <laughs> deliver. Deliver final thoughts for Jalen. Uh, Jalen, uh, well done. I think the tricky thing with competitions and anything that's opinion based is like, well, your opinion doesn't mean anything anyway. So <laughs> take everything with a grain of salt. I think you know how you did and you know how you feel about your music and I'm sure it touches you and touches the people with whom it resonated far more. So um, well done and keep 
singing, keep performing. And one thing I really like is that you seem very uh, confident in your style and your person. And I think that comes through the music. So keep that up. It's a lot of fun to watch while you perform. Awesome. Thank you, Deliver. Nicholas Runkel. Jay Lynn, it's been great getting to know you virtually so far. I hope I get to meet you someday in person, uh, even if it's just in passing, but hopefully even the Lakeside Pride Band. I know you've got a lot of things you do. I was hoping to see you play the bass at some point during this competition. So I'm sorry that we didn't get to see another instrument uh, come out. But good job. Catalina. Jalen, it's been so nice to get to know you, even though it's been all virtual. Um, I'm definitely gonna miss hearing your songs and seeing you every week. But if you do like a Facebook Live or anything, like please let me know so I can watch it. All right, Quentin. Jalen, it's been a, a pleasure to get to know you and watch you perform. Um, all of your songs have been amazing. Um, and I'm, I'm sure this won't be the last time we see you. And I will, I will be sure to keep an eye out uh, for you on Instagram and uh, social media to see what you're up to with music. So, uh, yeah. Best Thank you, Q. Beautiful transition. Follow on social media, all the artists. Jay Lynn, any, any words before you go for us? This was fun. I honestly signed up for this on a total whim and I was like, that looks like a good time. And I'm, I'm really glad I did. I had a great time and I got to meet awesome people and I'm, I can't wait until we can get together in person. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> yep. That's on Ashley. That's on Ashley to organize, uh, organize the concert and get it together. <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone this was awesome thank you everyone for watching next week eight o'clock we've got the top three we only have two weeks left and i love you as well mom so does barbie and yes senior too so thank you everyone open my challenge this week we'll see you all back here again all next right. week bye everyone take care bye, bye. good night peace